The Testimony of Elizabeth 40 Days with Jesus in Heaven and Hell Kindly share this testimony for faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Subscribe to this channel that gives you unfiltered truth. Day 31 This morning my throat felt dry, I wanted to drink more than one or two drops. After asking God for permission, I took a glass of water. Praise the Lord, I can drink more than usual. I felt happy, relieved, and refreshed. While praying, I met the Lord Jesus in the palace. I walked out of his palace, walked back to the place where many of his houses were. There I met more extraordinary Bible characters who loved the Lord. I met Malachi, his message, do not ever steal the Lord's possession. What belongs to the Lord belongs to the Lord. When you obey the word of God, surely the Lord will return your possessions. God is rich, he never owes. I met Daniel, his message, every statement of the Lord concerning the end times will be fulfilled these days. Defend and persevere in your faith in God. Stay faithful, worship him with respect and fear. I met Elisha, his message, ask the Lord to be equipped with the spirit of God to make you strong in facing every challenge and problem in your life. I also met Elijah and he said, in these last days, there will be many Jezebel spirits who crush and oppress the children of God, spirit and soul, so that physically the children of God will feel depressed and sick. Many children of God will give up, be disappointed in the Lord, discouraged and think that the Lord never helped and cared for their lives. Children of God, must realize that when faced with any serious problems, do not be afraid, they must believe in God that God always helps. Day 32 Today I walked with the Lord Jesus. He lovingly took my hand. I saw a river in a residential area and the Lord Jesus took me there. Next to the river were shady trees. The trees were sturdy with thick leaves and roots that spread into the river. There were rocks around the river. I couldn't wait to put my feet in the river. Not only that, I also wanted to play with the water and swim. The river water that flowed was so clear and cool. I saw the Lord Jesus sitting by the river, smiling at me as I was playing with the water. Once satisfied playing with the water, I immediately approached the Lord Jesus. I sat next to the Lord Jesus, watching around the river and the sturdy thick leafy trees around it. There were trees that have round, purplish-red fruits, and various other fruit trees. Very shady and cool. Very beautiful, not to mention the fish in the river that swam here and they're added to the beauty of this place. Books. The Book of Life and the Life Journey Book. After observing the surrounding area, my gaze was fixed on the Lord Jesus who was holding two books, one in the right hand and the other in the left. Lord Jesus, what book is that? I asked curiously. This is the book of life, said the Lord Jesus showing the book in his left hand. Then what is the other book, Lord? I asked curiously. This is your life journey book. From the time you were born until the time I come to fetch you. Back to my home, said the Lord. Revelation 20 12 minus 15. 12 and I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. 13 The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them, and each person was judged according to what they had done. 14 Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. 15 Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. I was very curious and wanted to see the contents of the books immediately. But before I could hold the book, my physical body felt weak. I decided to rest. Day 33. The Book of Life. I was back with the Lord Jesus in the beautiful river. I saw the Lord Jesus holding two books. The Book of Life and the Book of My Life. Before I could ask permission from the Lord Jesus to look at the book, he said, this is the book of life. The Lord Jesus knew what was in my heart and mind. Then the Lord Jesus began to open the book. I saw in it, names written in gold ink. The neat writing fills the thick pages of the book. In this book I write the names of those who believe in me. 
anyone who believes in me until the end of his life, who perseveres in his faith, I will write his name in this book. Every person whose name is written in this book will be saved from eternal damnation, from hellfire, and I will provide a place for them. They will enjoy eternal life together with me. While listening to the words of the Lord Jesus, my eyes were fixed on the pages of the book. I was so curious and there was a sense of nervousness when my eyes looked at the pages of the book, I just wanted to make sure my name was written in the book. Don't worry, my dear, when you made the decision to believe in me, I immediately wrote your name in this book. No one can write and erase the names in this book except I, who owns this book and who owns this place. All names written in this book or even deleted from this book are according to my will. The decision you make in your life whether to believe in me or not will determine whether or not I will write your name in this book. If your name is written, you will enjoy eternal life with me. If your faith stops in the middle of life's journey or you do not believe in me at all, I will not write your name in this book and you will receive eternal damnation. As I was excited to hear the words of the Lord Jesus, my gaze was immediately fixed on the page of the book of life where my name was written. Elizabeth Widyawati Herman. I immediately heaved a sigh of relief, grateful and happy. I hope and surrender to the Lord. To be able to persevere in faith until the Lord Jesus comes again, so that my name is not erased from the book of life and I can enjoy living in heaven with the Lord Jesus. Day 34. The Life Journey Book. When I was praying, my spiritual body was again beside the Lord Jesus. I couldn't wait to ask. For my book of life. Lord, what about the other book? Yesterday didn't you show me two books? This book is your life journey book. I wrote down all the events in your life since you were little, even as a baby the first time you were in your mother's womb. I have written all of your life's journey until you return to my home, until I call you home, I have written all of them. Everything that happens in your life, I have written in this book. See my dear, from the first time I wrote until now as you experience this event meeting me. There is not a single moment in your life that I had not written, I have recorded everything. I looked at the pages of my book, but I didn't read every line or page, only that there were not many pages left. In some of these pages, I saw events that have not yet happened. But there seemed to be not much of my life left to live, I didn't know how many more months. How many more years? I am coming soon to take you home. I would like you to be my beautiful bride, spiritually. Mature. Not like a child anymore. You can see there are not many pages of life left. I just nodded my head as I shed my tears. The Lord Jesus is coming soon. I have a little more. Time to live. Lord, I do not want you to take me home in this very near future. My life is still chaotic. I want to organize my life better even though it is difficult. I have many problems and challenges, but when you come for me, I want to be the most beautiful bride for you. Day 35. Warehouses in Heaven. 1. Warehouse of Human Organs. On this day I was invited by the Lord to walk to a place in heaven, a place that I had never visited. It was located beside the Lord's palace, but in the back part and not separated from the palace. This place was very big, very spacious. There were many shelves for storing goods. Just like a supermarket, the shelves were neatly arranged and there were several lines of shelves. I stepped closer to the shelves. I saw an object on one shelf. What is this Lord? Why is it like fresh meat? Is there a meat storage in heaven, like a refrigerator? The Lord Jesus just smiled at my question. My spiritual age at that time was only 12 years old so my question was childish. I ventured to hold the object. He, it was chewy and brownish red, really fresh meat, I told myself. That's a heart, my dear, said the Lord from behind me. This room is a place to store human organs. I have provided all the organs of the human body. In this place for those who believe and ask me. This room is for storing internal human organs. I looked at every shelf one by one, very neat and complete, just like a supermarket. There were many more organs too many for me to mention. Day 36. I was invited by the Lord to see the storage place of human organs. 
I saw something different. From the day before, there were names on the organs of the body, though not all. The names were neatly written on several organs that have been wrapped like a gift. I went forward to take a closer look and ask the Lord, Who is this for Lord? For my children who ask me and believe and not hesitate. I see their heart, and when I am pleased with what I see, I will give according to their faith, he answered. The Lord is very attentive, always providing the best for his children, I told myself. What about those who don't know you, Lord? When they believe in me, and I see a sincere heart for me as they listen to my word through. My servants that I send, I will give them according to their needs, said the Lord again. I am coming soon, so this is one way for those nations that do not know me to believe in me. And repent earnestly, but unfortunately, only a handful, even very few, of my servants. Understand this, and even my children who understand and claim to believe also sometimes. Do not understand this, many of those who, when they are sick, forget that I am the Lord. Who is able to heal? When they are sick, especially those who are seriously ill, they rely on their own money and their own abilities, they forget that I am a God who is able. Now you have seen for yourself no matter how bad their sickness is, how badly damaged their organs are, I have prepared new organs for them. I looked with full attention once more to every body organ on the shelves. Lord, why are these organs not moving or throbbing? The Lord smiled at my question. When a sick person believes in me, I will give a new organ, then I will put it in their body and I will give it life, I will arrange it so that every organ works perfectly. Day 37 Today I was invited by the Lord to see the place I visited yesterday. I was in a room with neatly arranged shelves, just like what I saw yesterday, but this time the contents were different. It turned out that this was the second room of the organ storage. I looked around the contents of the shelves, some were shaped like a ball and when I held it, it felt like jelly. It is an eyeball, my child, said the Lord. In addition, I also saw the brain, eardrum, and others. It turned out that this room was specifically for storing organs of the head. I continued to step into the very end of the room where again there were neat shelves. It contained something that was shaped like a string or small string. And the Lord explained that it was nerve veins ranging from large veins to very fine veins. On the other shelf I saw bones starting from the head, hands and fingers, feet and fingers, backbones and other bones. The Lord asked me, how are you my child, have you seen it all? He continued. I provide for all my children who believe in me, but sometimes my children do not understand this. Many of them think I am evil, or that I don't hear their prayers, and many of them are disappointed in me or resentful towards me. Now you have seen for yourself that what they don't even think about, I have prepared for them. Day 38, 2, Armory. While praying, I met the Lord who took me to a very large place. I thought the same as yesterday's place, but apparently not. Once I entered the room, I saw many weapons of war. Such as swords, arrows, shoes, headgear, armor, etc. All the war equipment that was there was very complete. When I approached to see the weapons, they were a little dusty. I wondered why there was dust in the Lord's room. This is just a sign my child, so you know, that my children rarely ask for these tools. These Tools are tools for spiritual warfare. Many of my children do not like spiritual warfare, do not like the process of life, do not like fighting, they just want to ask for instant physical and material blessings. You will see the second room also the same, my child. In the room there is also dust. The second room, there is dust. What room, O Lord? You see for yourself. Come, I will show you, said the Lord. Then I walked with the Lord to the second room. 3. Jewelry Warehouse. In this room, there was a lot of beautiful stone objects. When I looked, it turned out to be jewels. All the jewelry one can ever want was here, starting from bracelets, rings, necklaces, earrings. Wah! Very good O oh Lord, very beautiful. But the Lord was indeed correct, these things were rather dusty. 
Who is this for, Lord? These jewels are very beautiful. Quote. These are the jewelry that I provide for my brides so that they become beautiful brides. Before me. But unfortunately, many of my children do not understand this. I am coming. Soon, I want all my children to be my beautiful brides. But only a few of them want to be my bride. My bride is a spiritual adult. I want my children to be spiritual adults in order to be my bride, but they only want to be children. They only want to be spiritual children who do not want to grow spiritually into spiritual adults. They only ask for blessings, anointing, rarely do they want to grow spiritually into spiritual adults. Very few want to know me, my person, to be close to me. They do not even need to ask for things because I have provided for them, as long as they are close to me, whatever they need. I have provided for them. I only want my children to be close to me, to be a person of spiritual maturity, to be a beautiful bride to be. 4. Food Supply Warehouse The Lord took me to another room. The Lord showed a room in which there was abundant wheat, oil, and wine. Look, I have provided everything for my children, but many of my children only want wheat, wine, oil. They don't want me as the one who has all this. Day 39 Today I met the Lord Jesus again and I sat with him. Heaven is a very beautiful place. I want to always be in this place, I don't want to go back to the world anymore. The world is full of problems and busy activities. I want to continue to be in this place, I said to myself. But before I could say that, God, the omniscient one, patted my shoulder and smiled, he said. You cannot stay in this place, right now your work is not finished. But there will come a time. After your assignments are finished, I will come for you to take you home, along with all my other children and servants who believe in me and who love me. Tell everyone you meet that heaven and hell really exist. Believe in me as God and Savior. Then everyone who confesses in his heart and speaks with his mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, his name will be written in the book of life, he will be saved and will receive an inheritance in the heavenly kingdom. But whoever does not believe in me, his name will not be recorded in the book of life and he will perish into the eternal fire of hell, where there is eternal torment. My children, continued the Lord Jesus, hold fast to your faith in me. These last days that you will live through will be increasingly evil, will be increasingly difficult. But don't worry. Every problem that you face, I will surely give you a way out, the best solution according to my will, I want my children to abide in my love, to love me, and to live in love, to love everyone. Because people are increasingly selfish, they love only themselves. But I want each of my children to share my love with all people, especially those who are poor, miserable, oppressed, and need help. Live in my love, love one another, be full of wisdom. I want my children to have my character, until the end of their lives. Nourish your body, soul, and spirit until I come the second time to take you up in the glorious clouds. Be my holy people, have a clean heart and a holy mind. Don't have idols in your mind and heart. Whatever is binding your heart and mind must be let go. Don't let anyone or anything surpass me in your life. I want all my children to focus in. Put me first in their lives. Don't focus on anything. Don't focus on your problems, don't focus on your possessions. Because in these last days, many of my children are not focused on me, but are focused on money. All my children, who still hold idols either in their hearts and minds or who are still bound by something, I will shake up, in order to release every idol and its ties, so that when I come, my children would have become my bride, truly beautiful, possessing a pure and holy heart and mind. I asked, Lord, what does it mean to nourish your body, soul and spirit? He answered, my children must really take care of their lives, preserve their lives. Guarding and nourishing their body by taking care of their health, controlling the desires of the flesh, using every part of their body which I have given to the glory of the Lord, to serve the Lord. For I will hold each of my children accountable for how they have used every part of their body, at my coming.
guarding and nourishing their soul by always praising and worshipping the Lord, giving. Thanks to the Lord, most of my children grumble, not able to control their emotions, they measure everything in their lives only by the material and physical blessings they receive. They forget that their lives are my grace, what they have is a result of my goodness and virtue. Guarding and nourishing their spirit is very important, because with a strong spirit, the body and soul can be controlled. Serve the Lord sincerely, purely, tirelessly without being bored. I only ask that you use whatever you have in you to expand my kingdom in the world. Whatever you have, whether possession, talents, skills, whatever it is, whatever you can, do it to serve. So that many more souls repent and are saved. To every servant of mine, serve the Lord sincerely, purely without any motivation to get blessings, money or self-prosperity. Do not be arrogant with what you have accomplished. Because whatever you have, you have because of my grace, do not steal my glory. Ahead of my coming, I want all my children, my servants to unite. Do not make boundaries between one another. Do not consider one church better or more powerful than another. Because it is not the church that saves and allows people to enter the kingdom of heaven, but it is I. Only those who have hearts that truly believe and love me will enter the kingdom of heaven. The Lord Jesus delivered so many messages. Lord, so many rules that must be carried out by your children. Who is able to do everything? It seems that no one can carry out your commands, O Lord. Is it hard to be a child of God? If no one can carry out your commandments, then no one is saved. Truly, Lord Jesus whom I worship is a Lord who knows all the contents of the mind and heart. All who enter the kingdom of heaven enter only by the grace I give. When people believe in me, that person has the right to enter into my kingdom. But I judge not from the first moment. They made the decision in their life to repent and believe in me. I judge the end of their life. Whether they still believe in me and love me. Therefore, it is necessary to be guided by the Holy Spirit in living their life, so that they are able to do my every will. There are many children of the Lord who, in the middle of their lives, cease to trust me, leaving me. Exchanging the salvation they received only for the sake of wealth, honor, pleasure which are all temporary in the world. I saw the sad face of the Lord Jesus. It is your duty and the duty of my children, my servants who believe in me to bring my children who have long forsaken me to return to me, and also bringing those who do not believe in me to repent and believe in me before my second coming. Day 40. When I prayed, I met the Lord Jesus in a very bright room. In this place people were praising and worshipping the Lord, cheering the name of the Lord Jesus as King of Kings. I saw the Lord Jesus sitting on a chair covered in gold. There were beautiful stones in the chair. The Lord Jesus was clothed in a king's robe, in purple, very majestic. His crown was covered in jewels, with his face that was firm, authoritative, but full of tenderness, his glory shone. I could only cry, kneel, bow my face to the floor, worship the Lord Jesus. This is your last day experiencing this process that you have been going through. You cannot stay here forever, someday I will come to take you and my other children. After today, you will return to your normal life activities, but don't forget any of my messages. Tell everyone what you experienced. Pray without ceasing and read the word of God. Convey this to my children and my other servants, because through my word, I declare and convey my heart, what must be done in life until my second coming. Third temple built in Israel. After speaking, then the Lord Jesus showed me a vision like a big screen movie. I saw a beautiful box-shaped building, but I had no idea what that building was. The Lord said, When this building is finished being built, it will be the sign that my second coming is imminent. I did not understand and immediately asked, What building is that, Lord Jesus? It is the holy temple in Israel. Watch Israel carefully. If this temple in Israel is built, it means my coming is imminent. But before the temple is built, many people who did not believe in me will come to repent and believe in me. Those who believed in me, but who have long been 
Far from ME will return to belong to ME. After the temple is built, see what happens. The chosen people of God will be removed and protected during the Antichrist era. Then I saw many people who were suddenly lifted up. They were gathered in one place, wearing clean white robes, whereas those who remain in the world were shocked, crying and screaming. After the rapture occurred, there was tremendous confusion and chaos on earth. This will happen and I will protect my children with whom my heart is pleased. I will protect them from a time of terrible turmoil, the time of the Antichrist, during which the world and those who are not raptured will be under the power of Satan and his followers. I also saw many people on the pulpit of churches who were not lifted up. Likewise, in a group of people praying, some were not lifted up. Lord, how can we be lifted up? Why not everyone? He replied, not only those who are not serious about me, but many who claim to be my servants are not lifted up either. Only those who please me are protected from the time of the Antichrist. Those who are left behind must pay the price with their lives. They must continue to believe in me until the end of their lives to be part of the kingdom of heaven. The left behind and the raptured. I saw people who denied the Lord Jesus having a mark on their foreheads and on their hands to carry out daily activities to survive. In the stores, people who wanted to buy must show the mark. Those who did not have the mark could not carry out their activities and could not buy. In any store, many people who have did not have the mark died being tortured and killed because they did not want to deny their faith in the Lord Jesus. I saw people who were protected by the Lord Jesus all ascending to the clouds with their white robes glowing. From above I saw the Lord Jesus shining brightly descending from heaven. I was stunned, as I observed everything with full attention. The Lord Jesus said to me, What you see will all happen, tell my people to watch and pray. To guard their lives so that they will be pleasing to me. Today is the last day you experience. This process, you will return to your normal life activities until I come back to take you. The Lord Jesus smiled at me, his hand stroked my hair. After that I felt my spirit return to my room, the place where I prayed. I waited anxiously for tomorrow. I couldn't wait to get back to talking and doing my usual activities without being considered strange by my friends and the people I meet. The following days, the next day when I woke up in the morning, I felt very thirsty, my throat was very dry. I tried to drink little by little. Praise the Lord I could drink. Then I murmured, afraid that I could not talk anymore. I tried to speak slowly. Praise the Lord, I was able to talk again. Although my body still felt weak due to the 40-day process, I was happy and grateful. For more than two weeks I was not able to eat rice because I was still reminded of the state of hell, seeing rice was like seeing maggots, worms. I continued to make the effort to recover. I started by eating baby porridge, milk, and fruit. Praise the Lord, I slowly recovered and now, I am able to eat the food that I used to eat, including rice. I give thanks to the Lord Jesus for the personal experience I had with him, an encounter with the Lord Jesus that was so special that I will never forget in my entire life. Each of us must experience a personal encounter with God through prayer and reading God's word. Only a personal encounter with the Lord Jesus makes our lives exciting, zealous, full of passion, and makes us fear the Lord and love him. The Lord Jesus Christ blesses. The testimony of Elizabeth. 40 days with Jesus in heaven and hell. Kindly share this testimony for faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Subscribe to this channel that gives you unfiltered truth. Day 31. This morning my throat felt dry, I wanted to drink more than one or two drops. After asking God for permission, I took a glass of water. Praise the Lord, I can drink more than usual. I felt happy, relieved, and refreshed. While praying, I met the Lord Jesus in the palace. I walked out of his palace, walked back to the place where many of his houses were. There I met more extraordinary Bible characters who loved the Lord. I met Malachi, his message, do not ever steal the Lord's possession. What belongs to the Lord belongs to the Lord. When you obey the word of God, surely the Lord will return your possessions. God is rich, he never owes. I met Daniel 
His message, every statement of the Lord concerning the...